So we've seen the advantages of SQLite. It's a small, very easy to use, flexible, portable database where the whole database is saved in a file. Here we can see the file right here in test. S test SQLite 399K. It's got, let's see, 12,000 records in it. Very nice, actually. Everything's accessible via standard SQL. One problem with SQLite databases is because they're a file and people put them in their web directories because it's very easy to then zip the whole website and have a backup of it, these databases can be downloaded. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say a hacker comes to your site and you just down, you just installed XAMPP Lite and everything, fine, and you open up your, your website to your internal intranet or something at your company you, using XAMPP Lite and everything, and somebody just goes to your site, types in this, you don't have an index page, and they see all of your files via their browser. They go down here and they find, hmm, here's a database. They click on it and they download it and they install the Firefox SQLite Manager, look at your database, read all the passwords of all of your users, etc., which is not good. So hopefully the websites that you're publishing on your host are protected so that this doesn't happen. The way you can protect this in your own websites is with a little file called .htaccess. And we'll create one here. Let me load Notepad here and then save file here i'm in my test directory right so i'm in website and i'm going to call this dot ht access and be sure to in notepad click on all files here otherwise it'll call it dot ht access dot text do a save and then type in options high space hyphen indexes save Go back, reload. Oh, you're going to have to clear out the cache. One second here. Reload and reload. That should actually change it here. Options, indexes, okay. Option, HT access. Okay, it helps if you spell access right with two Cs. So let's do that. And this is also a very interesting thing. Okay, ah, it's good that we made this error. This is some impossible thing in Windows. It doesn't like dot .files. Okay, usually you develop on Windows and you upload to some Linux hoster, your hosting company that runs Linux. So the problem is, is that it's hard to make a dot .file on Windows. Just delete it and make a new one. So let's make a new one here. Learn as we go, learn as we go. So let's save. We're in test again. Dot H T A with two C's E S S. So now we'll type in options hyphen space hyphen indexes. So save and go back here and reload now. That little file protects the directory from being listed. Now your hosting provider should have this set so that your files can't be listed like this. But even if this is the case, or even if you have an index.php file in there and they can't list your files, you might have some hacker who doesn't have anything else to do. I'm a hacker. And he says, oh, let's see, what could be his file name? Did he call it testdb? No. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Did he call it um, test sqlite? Ah, okay. And he can download your database. So... What can you do to prevent that? Well, you could change your file to, for instance, some long name like that where nobody could guess it. Okay, that's a design pattern obfuscation, you could call it, but that might make it a little more or a little harder to access. But what you really want is some way to prevent users from downloading files that end with SQLite or any other extension that you define if they guess it, if they happen to guess the name, even if you prevent the listing. So let me show you how to do that. You go back to your ht or dot ht access file and add the following lines type very carefully because of the all of the syntax has to be exactly right files match one word with a large m space quotation mark backslash dot open parentheses sqlite and then close parentheses and then dollar and then quotation 
end tag there and then say deny from all and then close the tag files match there we go so save with control s and now let's clear the cache just to make sure this works so a new hacker comes and tries to download test sqlite and it says you don't have permission to access the requested object now um, just as a tip here, this is a nice feature of .ht access files, is you can put pipes here and define all the kinds of files that you don't want people to be able to download, like XT, XML files, maybe you have TXT files that you don't want them to download, but you want them to be able to download, let's say, backup files or zip files. So I've got this file called backup zip. They could type in here backup zip and they can download that. So it's a very nice way that you can define what you want people to be able to download and what you don't want them to download. And it's an excellent way to protect your SQLite databases that are online in your web root of accessible by people, but this little line prevents anybody from downloading them. But for those of us who are paranoid, we might say, yes, but what if somebody is able to delete this .ht access file or change it in some way, then they would be able to download your SQLite files. Well, then the only sure way to protect your SQLite files is to put them back beyond your web root. So at a hosting provider, you're usually given a directory that is below your web root. So let's say my last name is Tangway. Here is, let's say, all of the, within this directory would be all of the customers. And one of these folders would be called Tangway or my login name, Tangway, let's say. And then under my root folder here, I would have a directory called web root or something like that. And within that are all of the files that are accessible to via the web. The way you then protect your SQLite files is all of your HTML and PHP files are here. You go back one into Tangway and then create a folder called databases, for instance, and inside that put all your SQLite databases. And then when you access them, Instead of saying test, you would say dot dot slash dot dot slash or however far back you have to go and then databases and then test dot SQLite. And that way you would access a file on your website that there's no way anybody could download via HTTP. And so that's the um, surest way to protect your SQLite files on the web.